I'm going to share with you expert advice from the team here at APS on how to choose a sailboat clutch uh, and how to optimize its performance. So first of all, what are clutches? Well, generally speaking, uh, they are used on highly loaded lines that require the use of a winch to haul them in and to ease them off. Um, how are they used? Well, here I've got a spinlock cam clutch. Um, I have it fully open. I've got a 3 8 line running through it, so imagine this is like a jib halyard. I take it back to my winch, get a couple of wraps on. With this open, I can now start to bring uh, the sail up. I do have the ability to, uh, to do this with the clutch closed, but that drags the line across the cam action and really wears the teeth out prematurely. So you, if at all possible, want to bring the line in with the clutch open. And when I'm ready to, uh, to stopper the line, while it's still loaded on the winch, I close that, the cam comes into contact, I ease this off, and the rope will settle in to the cam, and it's locked off. Now I can take the line off the winch and free this for other duties. So I could have a bank, a battery of multiple uh, clutches here with multiple uh, control lines, halyards, all being serviced with one winch. So with clutches, manufacturers will tell you that they can be released under load. It is pretty much the last thing you want to do with the clutch. If this was fully loaded and I open it up, as I, uh, as I do that, the line's going to grate across the serrated teeth of the cam and it's going to put a lot of pressure and wear on the cover. And You can basically just serrate the cover away and it doesn't take that many loaded releases to do that. So the correct way to take the load off is to take it back to your winch and you want to take 100% of the load up on the winch. You do not want the line to move when you release it because again, you don't want it grating back and forth. That is the proper way to release a line from a clutch. All right, some other ways of holding highly loaded lines that you might see on boats uh, if you're not using clutches would be a cam cleat. Um, now you're really starting to push the working load limits of a, uh, of a cam cleat, uh, but you could do it. Um, disadvantage is you could accidentally release it. It's not locked into place. Um, historically, there were jammers before there were clutches. They were a much more simple mechanism with just a single cam on an arm. Uh, so a similar body maybe, but um, disadvantages to the old jammers would be, well, when it's jammed, you could adjust it just like you can with a, with a clutch, but it won't re-engage. You have to go forward and actually push the arm down uh, so that it takes the load back up. The other thing is, and what's really nice about um, clutches if you get into a tight spot, is emergency releases. If you need to, you can take a fully loaded line and release it. Uh, with a jammer, you have to take it back to a winch and you've got to get the load off of it in order to open it up. So how do these work? Well, with clutches, there's two basic types of mechanisms. Lumar uses these dominoes. So you thread the line through the, this is the guts of the, um, of the clutch, and the handle would be attached to this and it would rock this uh, forward and backwards. In this uh, orientation, it's, the line freely runs when you cock the handle down, the entire assembly rocks forward and it rocks down onto the line and it locks it in all of these places. Uh, so a very secure. With the cams, you'll see these in the Antals, you'll see them in the spin locks. Um, what you have is a serrated base plate and a serrated cam. And that's what's attached to this arm. And this arm rocks this cam up and down. And the spring-loaded action that this has allows it to self-adjust to different diameter lines. So when you put the handle down, it goes down onto the line, adjusts, and as you take the uh, load onto the clutch off of the winch, um, it basically gets pushed into the cam and the serrations and gets locked. And then to release it, it just rocks right back up. So in choosing clutches, comparing one to another, uh, there are two criteria that uh, you're going to initially approach this with. Number one is the range that the clutch is rated for for a line diameter. So in this case, this is rated for one quarter up to three eighths, and that's the range of holding diameter. The other is the maximum holding uh, for the clutch in pounds. Uh, how much load can this hold? And the way that's uh, determined is they use the largest diameter line and they're saying at this rating, uh, this line diameter will hold in the clutch. Well, 
what happens when you put this little thin quarter inch, less surface area? When you go to the bottom of a range for a clutch, you can lose 25 to 60% uh, of the holding ability. So when you see that published, um, that's for the larger diameter. So lesson learned here is when you're choosing a clutch, make sure its range tops out at the diameter you're using so that you're achieving maximum holding of the clutch. Um, moving into optimizing, let's start by understanding uh, what the clutches are dealing with. And I think this is really not talked about enough. Uh, there are three kind of classifications for line types that are used in clutches. There is the classic double braid polyester, low stretch relatively, uh, great workhorse. Um, then there is the high tech uh, line. This could be a Dyneema, a Technora core with a braided polyester jacket. And then we get into the high, high tech where we've got a high tech core, and then this is a blend of polyester in either Technora, PBO, Kevlar, uh, very tightly woven uh, and very uh, shafe resistant. So starting off with the first, what's so cool about double braid polyester? Well, this is the first line to be used in the old clutches and um, it's low stretch and it has always been low stretch, but enter these new lines, they don't seem as low stretch. So there is some elastic, um, uh, elongation in uh, almost all lines, but especially in the double braid polyester. So when this gets loaded up, a jib halyard, um, the load comes on, the line stretches, and then when the load is released, the line recovers back to its original uh, length. So if I had this line, here I've got three eighths in this clutch, I clutch this, I let it off the winch, and it slips maybe an inch or two. Really not a big deal because what happens is that elastic recovery basically absorbs that. So you don't lose a lot of uh, load uh, on the sail and you don't really have much in the way of the sail moving. So a very forgiving uh, line works excellent in clutches. All right, the second type of line is a high tech with a polyester jacket. So this is like a DSK 75 Dyneema with a braided polyester. Um, this is very popular for downsizing uh, from big old double braid, um, maybe moving two diameters down to something that is lighter, that is stronger, that is lower stretch. And guess what? It's a lot less surface area for your old clutch to hold on to. So um, don't be surprised um, if you haven't thought about this ahead of time. You just take these new hires, you stick them in your old clutch, and boom, they just, they're not holding. Well, check before you install and see what the range is. It might be that now this new smaller line is at the bottom of the diameter range for this clutch. And of course, you've lost 20, 60% of the rated holding power. So that cam's not going to work. That clutch isn't going to work configured that way. Or it could be worn and just needs to be replaced. With Spinlock, you have the ability to change the cam out to something that is uh, has a range more appropriate to this. So I can just take the two halves apart, stick this in, and that may solve my problem. With Antol V cams, the cam stays the same. The internal um, aluminum plate gets switched out when you want to optimize for diameter. And with the Lumar, these have a short range, so you may find that your new skinny line is out of the range completely. You need to buy a new clutch with a new smaller range to hold this adequately. Uh, but the name of the game is surface area. Um, so if that doesn't 100% take care of your problem with this new small 5 16 halyard, what you might want to do is make it thicker. And you can do that in two ways. You can add a second jacket that a rigger would put on there for you. Uh, but the most preferred way is to do a core insert. So using a FID, we would take and put about an eighth inch single braid um, Dyneema piece in there for the length that's clutched. And what you're going to find is uh, this is going to be a much um, larger diameter, giving it more surface area, and because the core is expanded, it's pushing up against the cover, which makes the cover grip the core and the cover not slip as much. So definitely the best bulking um, route to go. So you do all these things and you put your uh, new halyards on, you've got your clutches optimized and they're holding, and then all of a sudden, the tension's off your halyard, the sail's down a little bit, and you've had this major investment of time and money, and you're like, what's going on? Well, here's the part that a lot of people really misunderstand. 
in those situations, almost always what's happening is the clutch is working fine. It's holding the jacket. What's happening is the core is sliding inside the jacket. And because this is high tech, there's no recoverable stretch in there. The load comes off immediately and the sale starts to come down and you're quite disappointed. So the key here now um, is to keep the jacket um, together with um, the core. So if I've got a lot of looseness in this, um, even when it's not loaded up, that's definitely a problem. So if you think about the Chinese finger uh, catch, you put your fingers in and you put a little tension on it and your fingers can't come out. Same thing here. If you don't have this pre-tensioned, it's not going to hold the, the, the core. So what you want to do is if you have this slop, you want to tie the working end off. You want to go to the very end and cut the whipping off. Um, on the bitter end and then with gloves or a rag you want to work the entire distance from the working end to the bitter end and get all that extra cover out and then cut off any extra cover and whip that down so that it can't slide back and it's tight and that's kind of pre-tensioned. Um, if you want to go to the next step I highly recommend uh, RP25. This is something that you can paint on yourself. You do it, uh, you know, in a foot or two area, the area that's going to be clutched, and it'll saturate through the uh, jacket into the core, and it'll actually um, kind of glue them together. It also improves uh, the abrasion resistance of the line, and it's a UV inhibitor, and it's just super easy to do. If you've done all of those things, um, you're going to have some really well-performing uh, halyards. Um, if you're racing and you're really abusive to your lines, you may need to go from uh, to a, uh, a blended high-tech cover. So this is a polyester. This one is Technora. Could be PBO. Could be Kevlar. Um, and what these allow is, is for maybe some abuse. Maybe you can't take the load off all the time and you blow this thing. And this cover is going to hold up to that kind of abuse a bit longer than a polyester. Uh, so for racing, if you're going to be abusive, you really need the performance and you don't mind spending the extra money, uh, having a blended high-tech cover um, is a good way to go. And what you're going to find is that these are really tightly woven. The jackets and the cores um, are already kind of bound together, so you really don't, have, um, don't experience uh, the cover slip on the cores on these typically. Well, I hope I've been able to share with you some valuable information when it comes to choosing clutches and then how to troubleshoot issues you might be experiencing with them uh, or the lines. Uh, I encourage you to read uh, the corresponding post to this video. It has a ton more information, goes into a couple other issues we didn't get to here, and it has uh, pretty detailed comparison charts for the three group sizes of clutches so you can do better comparison um, shopping. So visit us at APSLTD.com.